Hi, welcome back to Event Ready Podcast, where we talk about our roller coaster ride of being a live event artist. If you're a painter, calligrapher, or illustrator, this podcast is for you because we're about to uncover the secrets, the stories, and the struggles in the industry. I'm your host, Michelle. And I'm Talisa, and we have Isabel back with us. Yay! Hi. Oh, we're ready. Yes, she's <laughs> ready to spill the tea. Okay, so this episode, we are talking about illustration. Um, last time we had Isabel, we talked about calligraphy. And she spills so much tea. So if you haven't listened to that episode, please make sure you do. Because it was very, very informative. And you got a really, really good feedback for a lot of you. My intro yeah. piece <laughs> <laughs> is over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're very lucky to have Isabel with us. Um, as someone who has background in both calligraphy and illustration, we can definitely tell you all the secrets all like everything um that a lot of people don't know what the difference of the challenge is like doing both and what it feels like switching up gears from calligraphy to illustration so sometimes <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge <laughs> mm -hmm. let's get into the tea should i say it <laughs> yes yeah, spill the tea yes. Isabel. spill the tea Okay, okay. So the T is that drawing is an essential skill to illustration. We can't have one without the other. Yes. Oh, I'm I'm so excited to hear more about this because this is something that I don't do, but I really look up to you both of you guys and I know you guys have a ton of experience doing this. So it's all about illustration today. But before we get into that, you mentioned that, so the T was like drawing is an essential skill for like illustration, but can you explain um, for someone who's not familiar, the difference between drawing and illustration? Like, yes. Okay. So maybe um, if we have a little bit of a refresher back on my background that I kind of talked about last time, um, I spent years I'm talking about like from when I was 12 to maybe the end of high school I had like semi-private lessons in fine arts um, and I studied with um, with a teacher who was like quite um, renowned in Hong Kong um, and in Taiwan for his watercolor pastel oil paintings um so I like truly learned um the foundations in like pencil and watercolor um before he even like let my hands touch pastels like he was very like adamant on learning how to do pencil work um and then when you were like extremely proficient in doing that, then you can use watercolors to express um, light and color. Um, so going back to your question, um, like what drawing means to me is like, it, and when we're talking about like people drawing, like it's life drawing. So ideally you have a live model in front of you and you're drawing that person from just looking at them in real life um and it doesn't have to be in like a classroom setting with like a nude model like I know that's how it's done in like proper I had that high school <laughs> I've never had that um and nor I, I don't know if I want to <laughs> I you don't like want to I, trust me <laughs> um but yeah, even if you're just like drawing your kid, your friend, your um, your partner, um, like being able to translate something that's 3D into 2D, that is like, that is the task that we are trying to do here, right? Um, so even if you're just like drawing an apple or a shoe, like how do we see the light and shade and how do they interact? Um, how do we express that with pencil? Um, so to me, that's that's life drawing. Mm -hmm. um, like actually being able to realistically, accurately depict a person um, from real life. Now, illustration, I would say is like, um, you know, by, by definition, illustration is 
um, you're tr you're drawing um, to explain a concept or idea. You're you're representing that person or that object in a different form. It doesn't have to be fully realistic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you'll see like illustrations that you know I do or others do. Like a lot of lines are simplified. A lot of things are exaggerated. Um, all those things come into play when we're trying to you know, put our own style into it. Um, but it's like the process of simplifying that life drawing. That's what like becomes the life of an illustration. That's mm -hmm. how I would explain it. Ooh, that's yeah. I like that. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Very, so artistic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So, you explain um, it so well. <laughs> I know. Oh, thank you. I try. I don't know. Now, sometimes it sounds like rambling inside my head, but I, I'm glad it, that it translates well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had a lot of experience throughout all those years with your teacher. And, you know, can from all that experience, that like really makes you see what illustration is and you know you can give your own um definition of it because you've been doing it for years since you were like a teenager right mm -hmm. yeah Amazing. and like from from time to time and I don't ever really post about these but um from time to time I'll take um like realistic portraits um as commission work because like that's the stuff that like really um, like brings me back to my roots about like you know taking um, a, an image or or somebody's pet like to accurately portray it to the point where somebody's like oh my god like that's my dog or like mm -hmm. that's my sister like that that's something that's like takes me back to like when I was 15 you know mm -hmm. that's when I was, like very like academically studying how to draw and paint like that stuff is the strong foundations I think um that anyone needs to oh for sure I agree even like uh like the I, I still do it even if it's not a commission <laughs> like I would you, I always have a sketchbook next to me um in my like admin table where I am right right now if you notice on the back behind me I always have my art stuff um I just I just like to take like half an hour, 15 minutes just to draw faces, just to draw like yeah. bodies. Just it's just fun. It's just like because you have to keep training your muscle memory, right? So like yeah. I don't want to forget how far apart two eyes are, you know, and yeah. like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's so it's good. You bring up muscle memory. And the other big thing I think people forget is like hand eye coordination. Mm -hmm. Because you're studying something. So like muscle memory to to do the drawing, but also like when you're looking at something yeah. and not necessarily even looking at the paper, but like you're just tra translating something that you see, but like onto paper, that's like an entirely other skill too. Um, mm -hmm. And you're trying to marry all these things together and have something presentable <laughs> in front of mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So we now understand the difference between drawing and illustration. Um, let's start moving into the experience and expertise. So something that we all want to know, <laughs> the tools. <laughs> the <laughs> tools. The tools, yeah. The tools. Okay, so, you know, during a live event, what <laughs> is, like, better for you what is more efficient is it the watercolor paint palettes or is it the copic marker pens what 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 do you prefer um I'll go first I guess <laughs> yeah yeah because we both have so, different preferences it's yeah. funny <laughs> yeah okay so um and like funny enough and maybe like all the listeners need to know that like Talisa and I practiced a lot together for like sort of going on this journey of um learning how to sketch and we tried a whole bunch of different things oh my god we like a, a, yeah so <laughs> I I mean you know I, as you know I am like very fluent in watercolors I'm much less used to like acrylic painting um much less used to markers um as I started on this journey so 
in the beginning, of course, I went to like what I was comfortable with. So I was like, oh my God, like, of course, I'm going to paint. I'm going to use my watercolor to paint um, for illustrations. And I did. And I always kind of um, practice using that. And then at some point, I can't remember when that switched, honestly, but I was like, okay, I see a lot of um, marker work for illustrations. And I'm like, oh, this is something that I feel like I'm lacking in. Um, but clearly there is a, there's a purpose for it. Like, what is it? I wanted to discover it. So I got, um, I got a set of markers or actually no, in, even in the beginning, I just used like my old Tombow's. Yeah, uh, I still have the illustration of me of yeah, that you did. It was in yeah, Tombow. Yeah, I drew yours in Tombow. And it just like the old Tombow dual pens with like the brush side and the bullet tip on the other side. And I'm like, oh, I don't use these Tombows anymore. So like, why not use them, right? So I used them and I, I saw like the benefit of using them because they are like so rich in color mm -hmm. um, with no... Uh, like I don't have to think to like add water and how much water right like the marker is the marker the mm -hmm. color is the color you're not blending mm -hmm. them you're just throwing it on paper and um and it's like so vibrant and like punchy that it like makes a statement with like very little time so I started like going down the 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 road of using markers and like really incorporating that and I kind of like wanted to overcome the fear of doing it on site because it's a media I'm not um versed in so then I started doing it in high volume and now I'm comfortable with markers but it took like quite a bit of time to get there um so now I'm in the stage of I could comfortably have both on the table and kind of like switch between them as necessary mm -hmm. if I'm at and maybe I'm like going a little too ahead of our questions here but um, for like different purposes, sometimes I'll only have markers, um, but sometimes I'll only have paints, but they're kind of for different purposes. Does that answer the question at all? Yeah, no, I, I really like that you weren't <laughs> comfortable with the markers at first and you were like, I should try that. I should get used to it. And then you mm -hmm. kind of like almost forced yourself to get it right. And then you're like, oh, yeah. hey, this is like, it's faster. It's, mm -hmm. it can be faster, but you, you went ahead and you got it and you started using it you like faced your fears about it it was a face your fear moment um because I was so uncomfortable with it and I didn't prefer it at first but so now I'm like I'm cool with both <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome is that the same for you Talisa um so it's funny because when I started I used markers and now I love using watercolor most <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny that we talk about it so here's the thing I think um I like watercolor the reason being is it's not really about like the way it looks it's actually more about like the ergonomic reason um if you like I find it easier to use brush like dipping and like I like I don't mind mixing the colors um I think I only have like what? Oh, only have the 12, um, the 12 color and I can mix pretty much for anything. But the reason I'm I like using watercolor is because it's um it's gentle on my hand. <laughs> um when I when I try to draw a lot with markers, my hand gets tired more from the clicking, uh um putting the the lid back to the marker. Um, so I was like, I can't, my hand is like actually hurting. So, so I switched to watercolor just because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but however, now the most comfortable I have actually like to mix <laughs> both using some parts of the illustri illustration with markers mm -hmm. and some with, um, with watercolor mm, that's okay. for like a full body fashion illustration. But if I were to do portrait, I'm only comfortable with watercolor because of its fluidity um so oh, yeah yeah I agree with that yeah because I think I think um with brands um they don't typically have any preference but some actually can say something like we want it to be watercolor specifically I had two brands that I work with they specifically want watercolors but I've mm -hmm. also had brand who's like I don't care what you use like you know I'm pretty sure some brands also want like just markers because we don't want any mess mm -hmm. you know 
and it jars yeah. spilling. So um, I think the best way is to know how to use pretty much any of them, whether it is watercolor paint palette, whether it is like, you know, um, a, a Copic, like an alcohol based marker. It um, yeah. doesn't have to be Copic. Um, I've used different brands. Um, and it doesn't really tell you which is quicker or harder. It really is a personal mm -hmm. preference. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think, I think, yeah, I think it's it really depending on the artist. But I think we're both, me and Isabel, we're pretty comfortable using any of them. Because like yeah. the, the, the rules are pretty much the same, you know, like when it comes to like adding colors. Mm -hmm. Um yeah yeah so you can just use I like that you switched it just because you wanted something that was more ergonomic for your hand yeah that, that must mean you have a really comfortable paintbrush or it's like <laughs> you don't have to like close it's just that I don't have to click it like the, the clicking thing <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was thinking know, like you might you might forget hand. to cl click it or close yeah. it and then you know you, you it'll dry out it's like it's pulling it opening the opening the markers is like why is it so hard <laughs> and you're all about being efficient like that is adding <laughs> another thing <laughs> so lisa's looking at my face like oh no she's about to say something <laughs> <laughs> The markers. So I really agree with the clicking when you're putting it back. Um, it's so annoying because I miss the lid all the time. And I just end up drawing this section of my hand all the time because I'm like clicking it back and I miss the lid and I draw my hand and I miss the lid and I draw my hand. <laughs> it's like it's such a struggle. And you're just like trying to be like, mm, it's okay. This is just this is just my artist process, but like really I'm I'm just like fumbling with my markers. Oh my god. Um <laughs> But delitting, I finally figured out the right way to delit a Copic is by twisting it. Um, it's easier. <laughs> I should have. Because if you just pull it apart, it's like no, a near like... damn impossible. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you twist um, it, it just comes off. But okay. clicking it back is a challenge. Yeah, that's a struggle. Okay. But I, I, I recently <laughs> bought like um the full set of the uh the copic chow which is the smaller yeah. one yeah the clicking sounds nice <laughs> yeah it's much easier it's, it's I, like it's a yeah, nice it's, click it's like looser yeah yeah <laughs> it's a gentle click but you gotta watch out though because the copic chows have holes on the lids um, i know that's, so that's like, um... <laughs> it's the whole thing um <laughs> See, those are the little when things you're that, like, refilling we... the markers just <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, that was oh the marker, God. right? That's a whole. Can other... I can I tell a side story yes. about the refilling? Yeah, let's hear it. So I'm I'm refilling for the first time. Of course, the first marker I run out of is black ink, and I'm like, all right, all right, it's time to buy the refills. Okay, so I buy two blacks because there's two. There's a warm one and a cold one, and I'm like, I don't know which one I like better. I buy by both, and I like I already have two black markers. I'm gonna fill them with both and see which one I like. Um, little did I know this was going to be like a project of mass destruction. Like, <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> you, you have to like open it, hit a tweezer out the nib, refill it. But you know, like the marker is not transparent. You can't see where the ink goes. So you're just trying oh. to like, you know, it's supposed to feel like an X milliliter of ink and you're squeezing in the ink and you're trying to do that sub subtraction of like well if I'm filling this with five mils then I should have 12 left or whatever by the time you're doing that math it's already overflowed right <laughs> and so I'm like putting stuff back in together I'm like oh, this looks fine and I click it in and it just like bursts <laughs> and it's like starting to like oh, the lid. oh my god it was a situation um, my whole hand was stained black and then, uh, and of course it's alcohol based. So it's not, it's not like paint. Yeah. It's a stain. It's like a real ink stain. Like the same thing as if you got Sharpie on yourself, you have no choice but to wait until like that layer of skin sheds off. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just done. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it was a like for your skin off. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. So right now I have like three or four markers that are in quarantine right now because I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to refill you yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
just probably easier just to get another one <laughs> i'm just gonna leave you there in the sad box yeah. where nobody touches you you're just gonna be there for now the yeah sad box. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, another thing with copic i mean okay i love copic <laughs> but you know like whenever you go to the art store they're always locked up yes and then like if you want to buy like a like if you want to try different colors to make sure you get the right color yeah. it would be super awkward because like the sales would be like why are you taking so long to play? yeah <laughs> and so and, like, you're just standing there awkwardly with like a supervisor and you're like am i am i stealing this do you think i'm gonna steal this like <laughs> it's okay ma'am <laughs> oh. but so I, I don't, I'm standing there doing exactly what you said. Watching. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I, I'm just taking my time because now I finally, like, finally absorbed that shame. And I was like, you know what? You can stare at me. <laughs> <laughs> Checking the colors of all these markers, all you want. I'm going to take my time. So I've like literally got like five shades of like denim in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, I, I don't know, I was feeling particularly chaotic that day, but I had the gall to like ask her for her opinion. <laughs> I was like, which one does it look more like light jeans? And she was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> she works there. Why not? <laughs> I got to stock up some stuff in the back and this girl's going to be the best to ask me. <laughs> I'm like, mm, this olive green doesn't look so green. I don't mm-hmm. think I mm, next. <laughs> I'm just taking time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so going back to the Copex, it's good that you brought that up because once you buy like, you know, your skeleton set or or like the 72 or 36 color, um, what I found was you really need to like um like build up that selection with colors that you will in fact be using a lot more um so like really expanding like the skin tones um or like thick colors that people tend to wear a lot like neutrals Mm -hmm. um and black (laughs) and all of the black uh it is like the messiest marker that I have in the bag because it's everyone and and a lot of these events are like cocktail type events like it's a lot of suits it's a lot of black dresses um Mm -hmm. but yeah like those are the colors that you'll need like the colors I never ever ever grab are like yellow green orange orange like I used orange maybe twice um and like I don't need three shades of like red orange you know (laughs) yeah yeah okay wait that like gives me a thought about the next question so yeah because these markers you said you needed like five shades of (laughs) denim um does that make it a little bit more difficult than using something like watercolors where you can mix your own or even digital like where you can like mix it digitally like it Mm -hmm. is it easier in a way or is it like more difficult or what do you guys prefer you want to talk me talk (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, well, I still prefer, that's the reason why I like watercolor. Um, mm-hmm. It's affordable and I can mix pretty much any color in the world. Yeah. That's easy. Um, and when it comes to digital, like I'm assuming uh, people will be using Procreate on iPad. So mm-hmm. you, it's it's like, you can like, it's so easy to like, you don't really mix anything. You just kind of like, pick the you color. Know, change, you yeah, pick the color and whatnot. So it's pretty easy. I, I'm not a fan of doing digital, to be honest. Um, because maybe because I haven't really, you know, um, figured out what's the best uh, brushes that I can use and in the settings, it's just a lot more complicated. I just, um, I just upgraded my iPad, so I'm still like mm-hmm. figuring that out. Um, but once I know, I'm pretty sure it'll it'll be easy. But I I still prefer watercolor for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, to answer Michelle's question, for sure, like paint is so much easier to just like, nail the color right away. Like, you know, in your mind, like, oh, if it's like light denim or uh, dark denim, you know, which blue you're grabbing, how much water you're adding, like that's mental math you've already done before. Mm -hmm. Um, For for markers, I don't choose it because of efficiency. I choose it because of the appearance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as far as like being able to choose that color, um, I I 
definitely think it's a downside for like mm, in the tray like which blue am I grabbing like that part is definitely certainly annoying um and that takes time to to like get to know um get to know your markers and Mm -hmm. like the more you use them the more you're like that's the one and because a lot of the time too like maybe it's worth mentioning the 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 cap color is almost never accurate to the never accurate yeah like (laughs) almost never you're like wow that's a really nice shade of like pink blush oh I think it'll be perfect oh no it's neon like yeah (laughs) ah like the number of times you grab the thing hoping it's going to be that color and it's never right yeah. um so like the more time I spent with them the more I got comfortable with them now I'm like super confident like oh like that shade of like trench coat is that <laughs> dull ivory like I know mm-hmm. the marker by name now and I can like check it um um when I grab it I'm like okay that's the one I know what color that comes out to so that's just like a matter of time that mm-hmm. you spent with your tool um like I do choose it for like for flexibility in like just like showing um the texture like I don't know if you like <laughs> why why would you have I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, have phrased it like that I was gonna say I don't know if you've studied my drawings but why would you <laughs> um <laughs> um but like having the dual tip on the marker is really helpful for me because on the on the hard tip side with the angle chisel angle the chisel yeah uh, yeah, it's like really nice to make the background work um, or mm-hmm. have shade certain parts of the clothes to give like a bit of a sharper texture as opposed to like, let's say like a satin dress would like fall softly. But if somebody's wearing like really hard crinkly jeans, you're using like a- the angled side to show like, oh, this is not a soft fabric. Like that kind of thing yeah. is really cool. Um, whereas um with watercolor for me everything's just like a little bit more like romanticized and like softer um and I'm like so light with paint that it's just like it dries and it's just a little paler than I want it to be but Mm -hmm. yes it go all goes back to preference (laughs) that's a lot of preference and like I can tell you guys practice so much because you really know your your medium like you know your colors you know like even the way that's gonna look on the clothes how it makes the jeans look how it makes a flowy dress like I've seen your your illustrations they're beautiful and it, like I can tell you use a very confident stroke to make like the shading on it like it it's a different look right with the different mm-hmm. uh, mediums but mm-hmm. preference all about preference right to Lisa Yes, it's all that preference. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and that's literally just marker versus paint. How how much time have we spent on it? Already? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not it. Like another preference thing. You guys um, were talking mm-hmm. a lot about the paper. That, mm-hmm. that was something that, yeah, I'll, I'll have you talk about it to Lisa. Um, yeah, surprisingly, <laughs> but- <laughs> surprisingly surprisingly no one asked about the paper and the paper was actually the one that me and Isabel took so long to figure it out uh for us to get comfortable (laughs) we tried everything no we tried every you know uh, different sizes uh the type um yeah different surface exactly Um, because even even if we're talking about like watercolor paper types there's very very different finishes and different weights and Mm -hmm. sizes and brands like it it was insane like we were testing so many different papers and sizes and we would like send each other like I'm at Michael's this is what I'm getting like Mm -hmm. and I think we still do that today actually we still do yeah (laughs) Um, look what I found today (laughs) I know we're such enablers you're like oh that's a good price I should get some (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah like uh because of our mediums that we are kind of uh maybe like not dead set on but like we're we're so confident with like what we want to use that kind of predetermines the paper already as far as like narrowing it down Mm -hmm. um so for me uh, with markers, I initially was using Bristol, um, Bristol paper yeah, on a smooth finish, uh, which I really liked, but it like always bleeds a little bit if I like go over it twice. Um, but it makes the Copics blend almost like paint, which is a plus. Um, but then it just was like, 
a little less economical, wrong size. What's going on there? <laughs> Sorry, Lisa I had just to... sneezed. <laughs> For everyone, I'm oh, so well, sorry. It I was had to mute myself. To <laughs> I, was, I was looking at Isabel, and then I see you up in the corner. I was like, "Where did Talisa go? <laughs> What's happening? Sorry. What's happening in the other room? I know. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Bristol. Um, and then when I was using watercolor, I preferred um, using watercolor paper that is hot press mm -hmm. um smooth finish so it's like a it's like like a satin soft finish um but is like a decent weight to it still um by my favorite Fabriano um and then after that I was like okay going back to markers I tried various different marker pads and like multi-purpose paper sketch paper um, and then like most recently landed on like a marker pad, which is a heavier weight than like regular marker paper. Um, so that's what I've been using the most and that I'm pretty happy with right now. And it comes in nine by 12, which means I have to cut it in half because I sketch on six by nine, um, which I know Talisa's smirking over there because she hates cutting paper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But I just recently found a six by nine watercolor paper that I like, which is like, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> the size, was that a preference too? That yeah. was uh, a preference. Yeah. Because yeah. I find, I think I remember the first illustration um, event that I had, like, I think I drew on like, was it four by six? It was so small. Mm -hmm. um, oh, because the. Yeah, because the it was for oh, portrait. Yeah. It was for line drawing portrait. I remember um, that. Yeah. So I did that on a hot sorry, hot press. Um, <laughs> because I was like using a mix of like a marker and watercolor. And I'm like and I was like, I'm so I struggle drawing small, so I, I prefer a bigger paper size. So I use two different paper now. Um uh, for portrait I use the cold press. Uh, watercolor paper <clears throat> and I think it's is it six by nine I think it is um and then for a full body you uh, have a European size I remember that yeah yeah, yeah. and um for the full body <clears throat> illustration I use hot press because um I want to make sure because it's illustrating I I like to have like a bolder lines Mm -hmm. And I uh, and I'm using a water like sorry no wait I'm using um waterproof marker um for that line and I want to make sure that it doesn't bleed when it touches the watercolor so the hot press works best um for that um I I, I we didn't talk about the uh, the liner marker I was just we... gonna say <laughs> the, li the liner was also a challenge to find oh my god that was a challenge like because we were trying to figure out um are we doing like what order are we doing it in pencil liner then color or mm -hmm. pencil color then liner yeah. and then there were some technical difficulties in that yeah. because if you went liner first then the liner can't bleed um yeah. when you paint over it and it was like such an issue we tested quite a few different options and then eventually we figured out I know I still use the Copic liners. Do you? Yeah, because yeah, the, yeah, the Copic liner is like Copic proof and waterproof. Yeah. Yes. And like it's seconds. So it's mm -hmm. like it dries, it's good. You can paint over it. Um mm -hmm. even on smooth finish, which is impressive. This is not a Copic <laughs> ad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I sometimes also use um the the pn marker the plastic nib because of the uh, the variety yes. of the weight um yes right um yeah like i do i do that. use that too um it's just kind of like in the case when i'm when i'm on site i don't like always grab it but sometimes i'll grab it for adding different lines so it's yeah. like super handy i love that pen so much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. a lot of your tools 
are determined, or no, the paper that you choose is determined by the tools that you want to use. Is that right? Yeah, and then the type of illustration. Too. That, that too. Oh my gosh, there's yes. so many things to think about. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right? This is why I need to know ahead of time, the client, when they ask for this person, do you want face or do you want full body? Because like, yeah. I'm bringing different things. <laughs> you need different paper, you oh. need different tools. Like everything needs to change, right? For sure. Um, I... Can I tell another story? Yeah, yeah go ahead. We love your story. Okay. So just um just recently, so I you guys know the story, but I'm gonna tell everybody else the story. Um I went I showed up to an event um where I did not expect I was going to be doing any illustrations. Um you were hired then, for something else. <laughs> it was hired for something else. And then they said, oh, I thought you were coming in to, to draw portraits and, and sketches. And I was like, oh, I did not know this. I am not at all prepared for any of that stuff. I don't have any of my stuff. And so they sent me home in an Uber. I go home and I'm like, oh my God, what am I grabbing, right? Like in the Uber of like 10 minutes, I'm like trying to figure out like, okay, I need this paper. I need that paper. I need this and this and this. And, and so I ended up bringing everything, including my paper cutter, okay? <laughs> like I was just like, I need to just bring all the things because I'm like freaking out like last minute. And this is like part of the thing that's like, we need to think on our feet so much. I did not think like w to this degree so I'm home I had like five minutes ubers outside waiting to like do the round trip back to where I started <laughs> and so I'm just like gathering all my things I'm gra grabbing watercolor paper I'm grabbing marker paper I'm grabbing my markers I'm grabbing my paint I'm grabbing my brushes like the liners like all these things I, like if you didn't know those tools like the back of your hand I don't know, like things would have gone very awry, but like, like Delisa and Michelle, you were saying, you know, it, it is like governed, like what you bring or what you use is governed by what you're going to be drawing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I didn't know what pictures they had. I don't know. I didn't have the sense to ask like, oh, are we doing portraits or full body or what are we doing here? I was like, I best just bring everything. <laughs> so I just grabbed everything because I was like, if we're going to be doing portraits, I want to have my paints with me. Um, but then if I'm using my paints, then I want to use my watercolor paper. And it's like a whole like waterfall problem. So oh were you yeah. lugging your whole suitcase into the Uber? Like <laughs> it sounds like so much supplies. You know, shockingly, I didn't. It was like a big bag and my case of markers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have a separate Ooh. bag for illustration event versus painting and engraving because mm -hmm. like it's just easier because sometimes one day I'm doing engraving, the next day I'm doing illustrating. It's just too much to like mm -hmm. figuring out, hey, what am I bringing? It's it's a struggle, man, doing like uh, so many different skill set. <laughs> uh, but I think... <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> we kind of nailing it oh down. God. But that's where your expertise comes in. Like, you yeah. know everything. You know how everything works. You know your preferences. And then mm -hmm. in like 10 minutes, you can be like, okay, I got it. Everything. I'm just going to bring everything. Yeah, I'm yeah. bringing everything and I'm setting up and I'm like, okay, right, let's do this. And then right? the staff are like bombarding me, like texting me like 50 photos. I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Breathe. if... Um, <laughs> Have you, Isabel, have you ever had an event where the the client provide the paper, like branded paper? Oh, yes. Um, a few times. And this happened at like the fashion house type brands. Um, so they, I think like, obviously like presentation is very important to them and mm -hmm. they kind of want to like, uh, like have a hand in like choosing the paper or choosing how it's going to look, um, like not that they're gonna like trust me to bring like bad paper or something like that but like they just want to make that decision right yeah yeah and and already have their logos printed on it um or like the booklet that it comes in like a presentation folder kind of thing um so that has happened to me and it gives me like super high anxiety because um I haven't tested it and that's not it, 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 we talked about this in the calligraphy episode. It's like, yeah, ink is, you have to test it on the paper, but if you don't get a sample, 
these are the inks you're going to bring and you know what's probably going to work on what type of surface. You're going to test it on site, five, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. Uh, but with paper um, um, for illustrations, it's like, these are my tools. I have no choice. Like I just have these two things. Like if I can't make my markers or paint work, like it's the wood. I it's a uh, heart attack. <laughs> so um, I show up and, and they didn't have the samples ahead of time. So for the first uh, example, yeah. So they couldn't give me a sample. And the store manager was like, <laughs> He was so unimpressed. He was like, oh, like, obviously we would provide excellent paper. And I was like, but you don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't know how this feels. Um, so I got there and thankfully like markers, whatever, everything worked fine. And it was totally okay. Um, and then with the second brand, again, I think I maybe either lucked out or maybe they're just also experienced. Of course, in doing illustration type events or um, having client gifts maybe prepared on that paper before, um, the second brand had even better paper. It was like watercolor paper almost. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, this is this is no big deal. And like using markers on watercolor paper that has texture on it, it's not ideal. Yeah. But you know, it's fine as far as like appearance goes it's just like it's not ideal for your markers but yeah it's gonna bleed <laughs> yeah um well I was gonna say it's like rough on the on, on the, all, uh, on the, on the marker the thing too like the yeah the felt yeah like the felt will get uh, get worn or wind like, yeah um but yes it does like kind of feather like blend out a bit on watercolor paper but it all worked fine um like knock on wood hopefully the next time somebody says I'm providing the paper it's still gonna be okay but I know I'll still have a heart attack that time yeah oh my god I didn't know that it, paper was like such a huge thing oh it is it's like the same thing as calligraphy like the paper like we need to know <laughs> right need to know. <laughs> but at least we're, we're just using like a few different types of ink and like the nib or a pen mm -hmm. this one was like you guys have your whole like you have to study the, the different colors of denim like you know your pen mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's gonna ruin my whole drawing it really <laughs> is <laughs> um, yeah that's yeah. how i feel <laughs> oh my god okay did, did we get everything for the tools I think so. Yeah. Was it oh, no. Did we? <laughs> yeah. It's like 50 uh, minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, this might be like a two yeah. episodes kind of thing, two parts thing. Right. And I'll okay. keep it going. Um, yeah. Okay. So the tools. Um, let's get into like the flow of like when you're on site. <laughs> um, so when you get there, um, you were talking about having a model, but do you like sketch from the picture or do you have them in front of you? like how what is better or what usually happens both have happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a variety <laughs> of situations I think we have both faced um maybe I'll answer first and then to listen yeah, you can you can you can okay. spread it. yeah <clears throat> um so there are um like more high volume type events at like um like a like a mingle type event like cocktail style um where it's just only live sketches um and those would be like at, they're standing in front of you um you have six to eight minutes to draw this person head to toe um as you're chatting with them as you're multitasking oh my yeah God. just hang out with them just the same way we do any other type of art the interaction mm -hmm. is the same you're just like hanging out chatting with them making the experience um and then you're like kind of studying like, oh, you know, their skin color, their hair, um, their body type, shape, um, outfits, their shoes. Like you're trying to capture all these like little things that like really capture the moment, right? Um, it's meant to be like a takeaway to remind you of this particular evening, right? Um, so that would be like uh, in person sitting only. Um, and then oftentimes at like at stores like working for brands I would say like we get a lot of photos sent in yeah uh, and it'll be like you know their favorite picture of themselves or like them holding their cat or like 
it's their wedding portrait photo or um their photo shoot done in Paris like it's it's a lot of um like curated photos and then it'll be a mix too because you're working in the store so obviously you're going to attract clients too coming up to see like oh what are you guys doing um and they'll want one and so you're kind of doing like a blend of like live sketches in in between those photo drawings um and I often if I'm prepped for both I'll ask them, like, do you want a full body drawing? It's going to be more gestural, more focused on the fashion. Um, or do you want like a faced bust portrait style um, watercolor kind of deal? And people choose both. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like a, a mix of experiences. Um, I'm going to share a few experience. <laughs> when I first had my illustration, it was still during kind of COVID time. So people, everybody has to wear masks. Mm -hmm. Um, so the uh the the strict rules was just like them sending me a picture, like air yeah, dropping yeah. me the picture. Um, and it was like the face kind of situation, not the full body. Um, and then another time would be like, remember when we did Ever New? Like it was like mm -hmm. imagining if they were to buy this outfit on the yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh. So sometimes it's like a Photoshop situation. Like, mm -hmm. hey, can you draw me in this dress? <laughs> um don't say okay. both no. you're photoshop you're, you're <laughs> triggering me and my ptsd um, um and yeah yes. and, then, and then that's like and like the thing like you kind of you paying attention to like their hair their skin color their body type and then and then you look at the dress and how imagine how it would you know fall on their body um and then make them look like they're posing <laughs> so that's like um the, the illust that that part is like where the challenge is right so like um but again I think every illustrator have I guess different style like um but I think we are pretty flexible in how the client wants it yeah. um if if they want like the portrait then usually it is a picture and I you know what actually a lot of times I don't get curated pictures mm -hmm. I get like selfies can, yeah it, it could be like <laughs> can you draw my grandma this is like her 70th birthday and then they would send me a, like a really zoom in picture it's very pixelated so I kind of have to guess what they look like and then put that on paper and it's like this is the only picture I have of my client can you yeah. okay fine like you know like sometimes it's that situation and that you know the shopper is not there or like the person that I'm drawing is not there because it's a gift for someone right um so because um because you know you kind of like want to try to please the uh the customers and your client whatnot so that's that's where that's where the skills comes in like yes. you're coming with this kind of challenge like you have to be able to draw with a really whatever you your, get <laughs> with whatever you get like yeah. sometimes like it's super blurry pictures like you hold like a, someone holding a baby and like on the side view like and it's super yeah. blurry like you just have to figure that out I'm like okay <laughs> Can you, or like the, or we would like go through their Instagram be like okay which one of this exactly. that works exactly I was work. just oh, gonna say God. Instagram because <laughs> a lot of the times the sales associates are doing this as a surprise Mm -hmm. right they're they're wanting to be like oh like I know they're coming in for a blah 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 appointment but I don't want to ask them for a picture I just want to surprise them with a picture and I was like oh here we go um and then they'll just like you know stalk their Instagram for a photo I'm like oh, this is what we have okay um all right <laughs> but you're right like it, it is like you just gotta well, like go with the flow what are you gonna say like mm -hmm. no um yeah because you you want to make that like a reality like yes that picture like we can work with that like you want to mm -hmm. be the one to be like yes we can do this um and turn it into a work of art because yeah we can do it um <laughs> and and like it and that's like that surprise factor I was just gonna say too is like that is um I don't fault them for that because it's way more of a meaningful thing to gift that than say like, oh, like, can you send me a picture of yada, yada, yada? Because we have somebody here. And then like, it's just less organic of an experience. And like, at the end of the day, we're trying to curate an experience for the customers and mm -hmm. or like the client's customers. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So you just have to adapt to the situation. Yeah. 
Yes. Is that, that must be stressful yeah. to, you know, you don't it's, have a client there and you kind of just have to go with whatever picture you have in front of you, whether it's mm-hmm. good or bad. In that case, are you putting your own kind of artistic twist on it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, the brands say like, oh, this is the style that we're looking for. But I mean, when I mean by style, it's more like maybe like it's like a black and white kind of portrait kind of situation or like, mm-hmm. oh, they want like uh, like a full body. But it's like it's still your style. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it easier to do full body because it's it's more like there's a lot more um, flexibility in terms of like the likings where, um, you know, you're just focusing more on the outfit rather than the face. Right. Yeah. Um, but so like if it's like a high volume situation, then I would only do like a full body and then, you know, go with the pose that I'm comfortable with um, mm-hmm. and then just add the, uh, you know, add the uh, um, the features, but still dignifying the people that I'm drawing, like, you know, like I'm not going to make someone skinnier or like, you know, I'm not going to make someone lighter skin or stuff like that. So you still have to make sure that it still have that likeness to the person that you're drawing mm-hmm. and in, in a high volume that could be really challenging but then like you know once you've when when you didn't know how to draw it it seems like it's less stressful because mm-hmm. it practice. was yeah I would say like the first few illustration events like the the stress like was high just because of like you you just don't know what your subject's gonna look like and you don't know how they're gonna react to your drawing because it is like a very personal thing Mm -hmm. you know like writing um writing a calligraphy card like it's personal to the recipient for the message that you're receiving but the art itself is not personal in that sense right Mm -hmm. um doing like a full like a drawing that's how you see them not how they see themselves so that's like it's such a personal thing you're handing over like some sometimes I do still have a moment of like what if they don't like it right Mm -hmm. um like just like just like Talisa you said like dignifying their features um Mm -hmm. their skin color their their body type um these are all like really important things like you just never want to offend anybody um one time I I did um this wasn't like at a at an event or anything but I I did a sketch of like kind of like an acquaintance on site and just like as like a fun like exchange um I was like oh well like I'll sketch a picture of you so I I gave it to her and she just kind of jokingly but you know it wasn't a joke um she was like oh why'd you make my skin so light and I like literally melted in horror I was like oh my god like I really didn't mean to do that but yeah the honest truth mm-hmm. was and this goes back to my point about like me being very light-handed with watercolor I think I'm mixing a color and then you draw you paint it on and watercolor dries like three shades lighter than you yeah. painted right and for me to like not go back to darken it um that like little step that I left out led somebody to feel like oh my god like that's not my face color like why did you do that and Mm -hmm. I was like I had no intention of doing that but I can see how annoying that is to take a drawing that doesn't feel like it's you Mm -hmm. um Maybe that's why I use marker now. No, <laughs> um, I use but... marker for skins as well. <laughs> <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> that's stressful. I feel like stressed out listening to that story. Like you're the yeah. artist. You're providing them something. And like, you, like you don't know. It's like they're looking at themselves. But like, it's like looking in a mirror. It's like, is it is it you or is it not? Yeah. yeah. It's just don't like, it's so just so, it's so strange. Cause it's like, it's how you, how mm-hmm. somebody else interprets what you look like and mm-hmm. not a mirror. That's somebody's eye, somebody's brain interpreting your, your appearance. It's like, it's oddly personal <laughs> in mm-hmm. that sense. You know, like you do, like you want to be, you want to use your, use your skill and, and try to do a good job of capturing somebody's essence mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. offending anyone right yeah. okay Thank you, man. yeah so that oh my gosh does that apply to like live events you were talking about like you know you have a, a few minutes to draw these people who are in front of you um but what about like if you're at a very high volume event 
um, and you're not able to complete all of them. Um, and this is coming from a, a question that someone had asked you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but do you stick to a number of like a first come first serve or do you offer like a number of onset versus like uh, in studio kind of painting or drawings? Uh, so for me, it's like, I'm, it's a communication thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so before you even show up on site, like you and your client should know, um, how many you can do, um, as far as capacity goes. So like for a live event, um, I would say uh, this happens on like the second email, if not the first email where I say like, oh, I can sketch about like eight to 10 people in, in an hour. Mm -hmm. um, they know that. And that's how they make their decision too, or one of the reasons or one of the factors, um, whether to hire me or not to say, oh, well, I guess like that doesn't really fit with our event or oh, that might not work with our flow. Um, but if it's a live, live sketch event, like live sitting only, um, if it's about like half, the guest count, I think it's a good number that like, if you can draw half the people in the time that you're there, that's a, that's totally fine with like a mingle only event, um, where people are just kind of like hanging out, coming to see your art, maybe lining up for a drawing. Like that's totally okay. Um, and then for weddings, like I would say again, like this is my capacity. Um, I have to be there for, for five hours. Um, and this is how many people, like up to about 50 people that I can cover. Um, and weddings are usually more than 50 people. And that's okay. Not everybody's going to want a drawing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and if the couple's okay with that kind of capacity, that's just like something you're going to communicate with the client on. Yeah. Um, and then on site, of course, there's a point in time you're going to have to cut people off, right? Yeah. So if you're doing like live sketches, I that that's easy because it's just sitting only, you know, the end time. At some point, I'll just like point in the lineup and say like, I'm so sorry, but you're going to be my last one to the person <laughs> behind them. Um, and then if you're at a wedding and you're like snapping photos of guests, um, again, at some point you're going to know, like we've taken pictures of 50 people, like this is the end of it. Um, and people are just not going to be able to get one after that. People are disappointed, but they're not heartbroken. Like they're still here to enjoy a wedding. They didn't even know yeah. this was happening. Like it's yeah. fine. And people make their peace with it. <laughs> Yeah. And I, like every inquiry that I get, like they always say like, it's 120 guests. And then like, you know, and I, I send them the PDF, <laughs> like I can only do this much for this hours. I mean, and it's always first come first serve basis. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, I think that's only fair. Like, like, again, like what Isabel said, like not everybody wants it. And, um, and that's totally okay. Um, but like, if they want, you know, everybody to be drawn, then, then you'd have to have like a a situation where the rest of the guests are going to be drawn later in studio for additional costs mm -hmm. right so that could be done like i've never done it that way but um but i have a, a client where he's like we don't know if we want to go everybody to be drawn but we'll just set with whatever you can draw which is like 40 people and then the rest if they want it we'll just take pictures of them and you can draw at home and then you're gonna bill us later so mm -hmm. yeah and actually that does happen I think more often than not because you don't know how the event's gonna go down right yeah if there's like people that are like upset that they they didn't get a drawing then yeah like the client's gonna be like oh that's fine like just we'll we'll do those later yeah so so how like <clears throat> sorry go ahead I was gonna say somehow the important people are always coming in last because yes. they're so busy meeting with other people. I'm like, oh my God, that's the VP though. But that's the CEO. But that's... Yes. Every time. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> yeah, their appointment was at two, but they came at five. Every time. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, <laughs> it sounds a, a lot like managing expectations. Like yeah. before the event, like you let them know how many you can do. And then you manage mm -hmm. the surroundings when you're there. It's mm -hmm. It's a lot. 
a lot of like yes. background stuff and you know you just want to be focusing on your artwork yeah here you, you are be... telling people like you're the last person like you have to come I've definitely I've definitely had people who are like not in fight but they were like arguing like I was here first <gasps> I know I was here first I'm like oh wow <laughs> I'm like please don't get me involved like I don't I wasn't paying attention because it's so dark and another thing too the the challenges is like when it's really dark I can't see very well so I sometimes I'd have to take a picture of their <laughs> outfit because the, my phone can grab the uh the color of their outfit better than my eyes um <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so much to think about yeah Oh, that said, um, for certain um events, I will have like a friend with me, a friend, a friend assistant, a friend assistant, um, <laughs> a friend assistant. This sounds like Francisco. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so having somebody there, um, to help with the guest management is very important, um, because then they can do all that kind of talking for you, mm -hmm. um, and like my my mandate for them is like please keep people off me like that's number one if they have questions um about the process the flow um where the cutoff is like when can they expect their drawing to be done done uh all these things are questions that like can be like michelle you said you're trying to answer all these questions and do your art and that's the purpose of having that person there so i can focus on the art like you also want like the client paying you to be like you want to be you want to be paying the illustrator for the time illustrating not, not explaining <laughs> not doing admin right yeah um, so yeah it's like my time is best used drawing not doing any of these other niggly things so it would mm -hmm. just like for those like high volume things it's so so nice to have um some so nice and so crucial to have somebody yeah there to handle all that do you um, are these um friends that you hire are they only for the like a super high volume like a wedding kind of situation or is it um also done in like a, a store not at a store no no because like I think I think the appearance for going into a store is like you are you are the one-man show you know mm -hmm. like you you can do it all like that's the that's the entertainment right mm -hmm. um for for like a corporate party or for a wedding you are there to serve two purposes so you're entertaining the crowd but also you're there to provide the actual gift like the actual thing to take home is just as important um so it's like having ha having somebody there to manage all that to facilitate mm -hmm. that and make sure that mm -hmm. all the guests that were promised one is getting one is, I think, more important. Um, if it's a corporate event, um, I've actually had them offering volunteer to help, um, yeah. for nice. that. And then it's 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 it's, it was very helpful because they know the people. <laughs> yeah, like they know the uh the guests. Like it could be that their clients wanna like I'm gonna make sure they come in. Yeah. Um. So I usually ask them first, like. Can we have someone helping with the flow and then yeah and then you, they can and so far i've been having that but if it's a wedding for sure i would have an assistant because we don't nobody knows anybody <laughs> right yeah. um but if it's corporate i usually ask them no to that's a good, give me a, that's a good tip yeah because um there's always going to be you know, an important VP swimming around in the crowd. You don't know who that is, but mm -hmm. like that person will make sure the important people get drawn, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys kind of touched upon this when you were talking about like the high volume, but you, um, <clears throat> I wanted to know like how many illustrations you guys can do at these events. I know, Talisa, you, you kind of mentioned it already. I think yeah I think Isabel I think we're pretty much the same um about 10 figures per hour yeah I Lots say, I, say eight, hour. I still say eight to ten and then I say the phrase depending on guest interaction <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's my like cover my ass statement to be like yeah. 
it, it can't always be my full capacity, which is about 10 an hour. Um, mm-hmm. Because there's always going to be like a few people in the crowd who yeah. like have a long conversation or like right. yeah. an important person that just takes a little bit longer. Uh, maybe this person's outfit is incredibly difficult or <laughs> like uh, just like a few things just for buffer. I say eight to 10, but like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is what I say is the max. That's, that's really good to me. Yeah. That's to me. That's for like the full body for portrait. Um, yes. I take a little longer. Yes. Like Do you 12. still give a number? Yeah, I would say like fifteen minutes for yeah. portrait. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's based on the detail then. Mm-hmm. Portrait, I would only do in like low uh, volume. I would not do it in high volume. Mm, yeah. Okay. So in store kind of work. Yeah. Yeah, All like right. in store, very like exclusive, oh, like intimate, low. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. master class. Um like very intimate uh, parties and whatnot event that makes sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay should we move on to some of the challenges yeah oh one all right mm-hmm. um okay this is one that i i always think about um it's the poses that you guys choose for your clients mm-hmm. because not all of them are you know doing these like modelly poses for you <laughs> how does that work out <laughs> you guys are laughing <laughs> um maybe I, I like I want to speak to like the art of it a little bit yeah um, please because drawing the poses is like so okay maybe one one step back is like I say I say what I do is fashion illustration, right? Fashion illustration has like a like a very long standing history in design and like it's used to communicate um the clothes the clothing and mm-hmm. how it's made, the fabric, like all those things are detailed in fashion illustration. It's it's used as a tool to communicate that. Um so then when you're doing these poses, it's why why are fashion illustrations um posed like on the runway it's because we want to see how the clothes move on the runway like we would we need to see how it it does when it's being walked this way um what does it look like from the back what does it look like from the side um that's why those poses were i don't know invented or um why they're like popular developed yeah developed thank you yeah. um and so like what we're doing now, like, of course, we aren't fashion designers. We're not communicating a fashion design to anyone with our illustrations. Um, what we're doing is like we're borrowing that illustration concept to make um, to make a sketch for like as a favor, as a as a gift to somebody. Right. Um, so we're borrowing these poses from like something that's like quite like longstanding and, and historical, it's like so important to actually study them. Um, so like you're trying to figure out um, the human body to draw it first of all, and then to pose it in certain ways and then making sure the proportion is right. Um, the, the limbs are going the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, something as simple as like, um, like an arm cross, like, you know, it's important, like you, you're you drawing like the elbow is up and like the V is going this way. You're never going to have like an elbow down arm up situation. That's very mm-hmm. unnatural looking like stuff like that. Like you have to know the anatomy of like how the human body moves when you turn it this way, turn it that way. The neck goes that way. What happens when the shoulder drops this way? Those are the things that you're studying um, to make sure that the pose looks right um, and natural and somebody could actually do that pose rather than you've just drawn them this way um but of course there's some like um some exaggerations or like um things that are stylized but like it's rooted in a like a very um a very real historical (laughs) construction of those poses so um Mm -hmm. it is like when you're on site you're imagining um, a person who's just standing straight in front of you, not posing. 
Um, you're just imagining them in these poses and how their outfit would fall in that pose, which can be a challenge, but mm -hmm. like, okay, if it's a satin skirt, um, how is it going to fall on this pose? If the knee goes out this way, it's going to fall straight this way. It's going to like, it's not going to fly into the wind. Um, <laughs> like those are the things that you're trying to figure out on site um, with the pose. But sometimes you do get like one or two um, people who are very creative with their poses. And you're like, I'm going to take your pose because that looks awesome. Um, <laughs> and you just like draw them the way they are. And that's like, that's their personality, right? Um <laughs> that's my experience that's complicated so you're not only yeah. understanding like the type of clothes the type of fabric but you're also understanding the you know how the shoulder falls like the body you need to know the body to be able to draw the clothes you, yeah you definitely need the the most basic thing you need to know like body anatomy um it is that's the foundation just like in calligraphy you need to know all of these um the strokes right the foundational strokes and in illustration, in fashion illustration, the foundational strokes are the poses um, that you have to learn to memorize. So it's not just like a simplified, uh, basic shapes of things like, you know, like rectangular or triangles and all that. But you actually do need to learn those body anatomy and how everything falls mm -hmm. to make sure that it makes it looks like a person. Um, and then you stylize it after there's like no um, shortcut when it comes to you know drawing body <laughs> um, and to, that makes it more sense like if a if a if a illustrator know how to simplify um, a drawing like of a body posing that's because they know how to do it in mm. detail and they know how to see it in a simplified way but if you're learning from like you've never done any drawing and then you're learning someone who's done something from the simplified way of drawing by copying that's not going to get you anywhere because you're going to be confused if you're given if you if you're being thrown at like you know a different kind of challenge right um right so that's why it's like so important to memorize and study different poses um you can start with one first like the simple one you know and and then once you get comfortable drawing how legs stand or how legs you know mm -hmm. and how your arms move around and then that's that's when you can like you know start getting creative with uh, how you draw them because like my when I see fashion illustration is that like you're drawing people but then you make them look like a fashionista even though they're not gonna stand like you know mm -hmm. nice you're still gonna still dignify them but also putting them as as if they're like in a runway um but that's one of the uh, ways anyway um uh, yeah. because it just it's just more fun when you have that flair of like the exaggerated pose and yeah and like that and that's the thing it's like it's so hard to explain this but it's hard to make those flares if you don't um if you can't capture like very specific details that can't be left out you know mm -hmm. um like let's say oh like I'm looking at Delisa's headscarf right now like it's flowing in a particular direction it's flowing in a particular way um like what is the shape of it um is it part of it is in front part of it is in the back like how are you going to capture all those things if you don't like know generally how those shapes are drawn um mm -hmm. but like it, if somebody can like look at that and capture that in three lines you will never be able to do that sort of simplified thing if you didn't fully understand that shape right um I don't know if I like that's like really explaining it but like there's just like so like a few little details that just can't be left out like for again like looking at Talisa's scarf right now like the one detail I wouldn't left out is the fringe mm -hmm. like I wouldn't leave that out like I wouldn't draw it as a straight line because it's textured it's kind of yeah. like waffly it's like crum crumpled a mm -hmm. little bit I would add that fringe I would add a little bit of <laughs> right like those are the details that like you can't leave out because that's what's identifying that piece of 
clothing and mm-hmm. Talisa will look at this drawing and say that's mine like yeah. you need to like have those little things that like can't be left out when you're simplifying something and that can only be done if you know how to do it from from scratch to like fully realistic so yeah. you have to know what to take out when you're doing this mm-hmm. yeah yeah that- Uh, I'm just thinking like if I were to do that like I understand the body type but I cannot simplify things because if someone new is doing this we want to copy everything for details like I look at yeah and like I'm like there's so many folds there's so many like creases in it like I would be staring at it and trying to get every single little detail but that's because I don't do this like when you Mm -hmm. do it a lot then you can realize like oh okay it can be done in three three strokes yeah Yeah. Talisa will know what that is like the or minimal like, strokes is that's less what is more. Skills coming yeah. less is more exactly like it I take Michelle's sweater right now like it's oversized like there's no shoulder seam on her shoulder like the one thing I wouldn't leave out is the fact that it's a drop shoulder the seam is down here that's like that's something that's identifying that sweater or like those like little dots on the side like to to leave out like maybe the the cable knit pattern right like I would take that out don't draw that but you can't leave out the drop shoulder because if that's giving it the oversized look like these mm-hmm. are the things that you have to study something so practice far. Be mm-hmm. able to like see something and be like that's how I would do it quickly mm-hmm. yeah. and I I think when when you're doing it so much when you're training yourself so much um illustrating you kind of you have like more confident and you can really see when someone has confident strokes than mm-hmm. those choppy little lines yeah. um and that's that's what makes it work right that's that, that's when you can tell someone's a professional or someone just like still learning how to do it level yeah. yeah um yeah like if you ask um if you ask uh anybody that you know that doesn't do this professional ask them to draw a rectangle right now on the spot give them a pen are they gonna do line 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 or are they gonna do like oh I don't know where this line ends so they might sketch 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 to that corner and then sketch 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 to that corner right like Mm -hmm. as that's like something that's so defining that like if you if you can't see in your mind where that those four corners are right away you will make those little movements to get to that next point because you don't know where you're going. Um, so if you're sketching like a body or a face or or a hair um, line and it's not one like sort of smooth stroke and you're not seeing on the paper where that line is, that just you just need more practice drawing the real thing um, slowly. Mm-hmm. You guys make it look so easy though. Oh, I think it's just because people don't see the hard, <laughs> the yeah. hard work behind the camera. We have like ugly drawings too that you guys probably don't get to see. But like you know, the the we don't the, post the, main... the ugly stuff, guys. Yeah, we don't post it. Like, <laughs> but the main the main thing is like you know, practice training, even if you don't have any events booked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's what it comes down to. Always practicing. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. let's move on. Um, So in different situations, right, uh, there's different types of illustrations that you guys do. I know you kind of talked about this, but I want to like go a little bit deeper into it. Um, Mm -hmm. So the difference between like drawing at a boutique versus like at a wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you had mentioned this already, but like how do you simplify things or, um, you know, what is your process? for different situations. I think one thing that like I can I can share um based on feedback mm-hmm. that I got at a boutique um is that you really have to pay attention to your audience, right? Mm-hmm. Um when you're drawing for like VIPs in store, you're again, you're, you're, you're preparing something that's like quite thoughtful, a personalized gift, right? They want to see themselves in it. They don't want to see like me with no face posing as a fashion runway. Like that's not personal at all. For example, like for a VIP to reasons, like this is not me. A, 
Um, this is not an outfit that I own. B, like it, if they don't see themselves in it, like what's the point? Like they're not feeling the attachment to it. Um, but if they're holding a drawing that's like, that's my family portrait like that's a sketch of my family it's done quickly I can tell but it's me it's my husband it's my kid and my dog like I can see all those things in it um and my hair is like blonde in here with like pink highlights like they can see these like little identifying things that like you you can't leave out that like my cat is orange with like white um white fur um like little things like that um you just like pay attention to to your audience and like make sure you're flexible to deliver what your client wants and maybe like maybe the picture is like a fashionista drawing right like a like a photograph that's like very wrong way do that do that picture in like very fashionable um um posed look um hair in the wind you know like all that mm -hmm. stuff like make that the one that you do it in that style um but just like really be flexible and pay attention to what's being asked of you um at a live event um you know if if everyone's like dressed to impress like you know right away your assignment is get the outfit yeah. you know um or like if it's like an intimate setting, like again, you're trying to study features of their face. If it's a portrait, um, you're trying to get people in a realistic way, but also flattering, like things like that, like watch your audience, be flexible, I guess, is the advice. <laughs> yeah. And and I think it's also really important because like you have enough portfolio. I mean, you have you, the, the type of portfolio that you have um, sometimes clients give you like like an sort of example of what they're looking for um like we want a portrait and I want it to be like the watery style and then I'm like okay well we I can do that and um and you kind of go along with it and yeah do with your style but also still align with what the brand is looking for yeah. it's like they want it specifically in watercolor. And then because they were um, promoting a new product, uh, a new perfume where it's it's like Le Papier or something like, it's something about paper in water. Mm -hmm. And then the style has to be like black and white. So I went with that. So obviously it's not going to be like a full body <laughs> uh, situation. And, um, and that's why I feel like when you're calling yourself illustrator, you also need to know that a lot of brands also ask for face. So make sure you know how to draw, how to paint yeah. face. And that's the thing with brands, they have clients, they mm -hmm. have high spending clients that return. And these are the things they want to give to the clients. It's not meant to be like a, like a cute favor that they like, Oh, I can do with or without this thing. They want to like walk away with this thing feeling like, oh my God, this is going to be the thing I'm going to frame and put in my bedroom, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with their brand logo staring at them every day. That's what they want. Yeah. Um, so it can't just be like, a, oh, this is cute. Yeah. Did you say something, Michelle? Oh, I think you're oh. muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. We're like, hmm? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, so it seems like with the boutique, like, oh, like, like did Michelle Isabel. fall asleep? Sorry. I know. <laughs> my mouth is moving in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it sounds like, you know, in the boutique, it's supposed to be a little bit more um, detailed, right? Because it, they're going to keep it not just like, you know, going to a, a wedding and you get like a, a favor. Of course, both are still really important. But with the boutique, it's, you know, people are, like it's a gift. So it's yeah. meaningful. It's super meaningful. It's a higher value. Higher value. And I was going to mention, actually, while we're on the topic, I'm so glad I didn't forget. Um, one feedback that I did get was also um, with the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, to leave them out. Honestly, I personally don't have anything against it in, in my culture. But I have been told by people also from my culture that it's like a bad luck thing to leave eyes off of a drawing Ooh. um and so I did like kind of like a little bit of a research or digging into that but it is it's 
bad luck. It's like a, um, you know, you're drawing like a, what's it, what's it called? Like, there's no identity to this thing that you're drawing. Mm -hmm. Like you, so it's, it's like a, like a faceless, like robot or whatever it is like that. that it's like bad, bad mojo. <laughs> He's giving bad juju. It's oh bad juju God. to like yeah. leave eyes off of a drawing, especially if like that person is meant to be you. Like, <gasps> so it's like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So that's one feedback that I got was um, mm -hmm. like from a store. It was like, oh, yeah, this girl came to do um, illustrations last year, but like we, I, I, we didn't like her. And at first I didn't uh, really know the reason, um, but finally it was volunteered to me. <laughs> that's kind that, of important that, that was yeah that um that the sketches she was doing was just too um like generic and not identifying enough to to the clients and that's like that's my takeaway from it anyway is like to watch your audience like who's taking this home and why and why does your client want you to do this for them mm -hmm. um it's not for the most part it's not going to be like this is a cute thing that you take home mm -hmm. that they don't yeah. they want something that's like of high value like you said yeah. right it might be okay for like weddings and whatnot but like it's not acceptable in a boutique situation mm -hmm. is that kind of considered like you know being flexible to what the the client wants like mm -hmm. they want it to look a certain way they want it to have eyes you know is that that those are things that you adjust for your clients is that right yeah 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 or like you know just staying sometimes it's just about like staying true to the photo too which is like oh well like she's this tall and she's doing this pose that's like maybe it's a five-year-old kid and she's doing like a cute kid pose but then you didn't put them in a kid pose you put them in like a different pose like these are the choices that you can either make for the better or make for the worse, right? Like, yeah. oh, well, this kid is five. She's going to pose like a kid. If you change that, that no longer looks like her, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So you have to be like pretty flexible when you get on site. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if you want to be hired back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, because yeah. the feedback goes to the person who replaced you. Yeah. You either get the feedback or you're the feedback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've talked so much <laughs> and uh, just uh, spilled a lot of tea, but uh, we're going to make it uh, a two parts of this episode. So uh, we'll see you on part two. <laughs>